Today we are going to have a look at how we can determine the validity of certain assumptions in the energy debate. Most of these assumptions are based around cost rather than material availability and constraints. I have been working on the latter for a couple of years and I am going to show you how I have been building the case to focus more on materials rather than cost. We will start at the United States Geological Survey website, or USGS. The USGS database is probably the best resource to have when you are trying to determine feasibility based on production rates and material availability. This is the most important section of the USGS webpage for my research. The Commodity Statistics and Information page is a repository for production figures of many essential minerals and materials. Let's take a look at Copper. On the Copper Statistics page you can find reports all the way back to 1969. We are going to take a brief look at the 2017 report. This report shows us all kinds of interesting statistics. Most important to me are the total production figures at the bottom of the second page, which in this case are stated in thousand metric tons, or million tons. Here you can see that the 2016 production was 19,400 million tons. If you wonder why I start with copper, that is because it is the most essential ingredient for all electrical systems, including wind and solar power. Check the highlighted text, which comes from the 2016 Copper Factbook from the Copper Development Association, which states that renewable sources such as solar, wind, geothermal, fuel cells, and other technologies are heavily reliant on copper use due to its excellent conductivity. So how much copper is needed for renewables? That's a tricky question. Not all wind and solar technologies are the same. Some solar panels use quite a lot of copper in their base plates, while others use metal paste or aluminium. Some wind turbines use more copper in their generators than others depending on whether they use rare earth magnets or not. So we have to use rough ballpark figures here. Now, this Wikipedia page provides some straws in the wind. First, we are going to normalize the figures to megawatts and tons. Solar additions amounted up to 30 gigawatts in 2011, which is 30,000 megawatts. Wind additions amounted up to 40 gigawatts in 2011, which is equal to 40,000 megawatts. Solar copper use was approximately 150,000 tons. Wind copper use was approximately 120,000 tons. Does this confirm the 3 to 5 tons per megawatt figure? I think it is fair to use these figures in our next calculations. Let's proceed and find out how much copper was used in 2015 to add wind and solar capacity to the worldwide grid. Here is the REN 21 2016 report again. We can see that solar PV additions were about 50 gigawatts or 50,000 megawatts in 2015. And wind additions amounted up to 63 gigawatts or 63,000 megawatts. This means that we needed about 250,000 tons of copper for solar and 190,000 tons for wind, together roughly 440,000 tons. Let's consider the most optimistic 100% renewable scenario there is. It is called the Solutions Project, and it supposes that we need about 110,000 terawatt hours of electricity output per year by the year 2050, and it assumes also that almost everything has been electrified by then. The Solutions Project assumes that we need roughly 15,000 gigawatts of wind and 30,000 gigawatts of solar capacity by the year 2050, which is 33 years from now. Suppose we want to achieve this with a linear model. We would have to add 
381 gigawatts of wind and 878 gigawatts of solar to the grid each year from this year until 2050. This is six times more wind additions per year and 17 times more solar additions per year than we achieved in 2015. And this is not all. Our 2015 wind and solar additions amounted to roughly 2.26% of the total annual copper production. If we would reach the additions required, we would need 29% of the total annual copper production of 2015. This has to be added to the 2015 production figure of 19,400 million tons of copper which brings us to an annual copper production of almost 25,000 million tons. We need to ask ourselves whether this is realistic, as the annual growth rate of copper has been fluctuating between 2 and 3%. We are already behind 10 years if this growth rate doesn't get augmented significantly. But there are more problems. First, the solutions project doesn't assume linear growth. It assumes a steep build out in the first years. Between 2020 and 2030, it assumes that we can build 60% of the required capacity. This means that we have to add 25,000 gigawatt of the total 42,500 gigawatt capacity to the mix in 10 years. That's 2,500 gigawatts of wind and solar, where we barely have managed to add 120 gigawatts per year so far. That's 755 gigawatts of wind each year and 1,700 gigawatts of solar. Let that sink in. This is 15 times more wind than we added in 2015 and 35 times more solar. And this is where the entire solution project will collapse like a house of cards. For these additions to be possible, we have to increase copper production from 19,400 million tons in 2015 to 28,400 million tons in as short as three years. Does this mean that I oppose wind and solar? No, I think that we need them both, but not in these quantities. Let's be reasonable, shall we? We don't have the infrastructure to produce these amounts of copper, and we cannot get the infrastructure up and running as quick as required. We don't have the production capacity required to build all these wind turbines and solar panels. And we cannot get this production capacity as quickly as required. Note that material production rates for other resources have to be increased similarly. We are talking about heavy rare earth magnets, silicon, boron, cobalt, cadmium, selenium, indium, silver, and so on and so forth. The list is almost endless. As if we hadn't have enough arguments against this foolish nonsense, Jacobson thinks he can make do with 110,000 terawatt hours by 2050, where the U.S. Energy Information Administration projects that we need 250,000 terawatt hours by 2040. You can clearly see where this is headed. 100% renewable scenarios are a pipe dream. Don't be misled. Don't be fooled. If you think it is possible, you've got all your work ahead of you. So what about nuclear energy? From this model by Per Peterson, professor at Berkeley University, we can see that a conventional Generation 2 nuclear facility requires about 0.73 kilograms per kilowatt of capacity. That's 730 kilograms per megawatt or 0.73 tons per megawatt. 
And this is where it gets interesting because now lifetime and efficiency are going to be factored in. How efficient is the nuclear facility in terms of copper usage contrasted with wind? It isn't that hard to figure out, but let me take you through it. We apply capacity factor to one megawatt of capacity and figure out what the total yield is over the lifespan of the generator. In the case for nuclear, we assume a capacity factor of 90% and a lifespan of 60 years, whereas we assume a capacity factor of 30% for wind and a lifespan of 30 years. We assume 5 tons per megawatt of capacity for wind and 0.73 tons per megawatt for nuclear. Now we can divide the total yield by the amount of copper required per megawatt and we find out that nuclear is 40 times more efficient when it comes to megawatt hours generated per ton of copper invested. And that's an incredible discrepancy. One final thing. If you have a nuclear facility of 1000 megawatts and let it run for 60 years, it will deliver 473 terawatt hours of energy. 1000 megawatt hours of wind turbines will deliver 80 terawatt hours over 30 years. So you need 6000 megawatts to achieve the same thing a 1000 megawatt nuclear facility does. That's 3000 2 megawatt Vestas wind turbines. A thousand megawatt of solar panels will also deliver roughly 80 terawatt hours over 30 years. This is the equivalent of 17 million solar panels. So let's try this math for one last time. To get 473 terawatt hours in 60 years, you need to invest 216 tons per megawatt of nuclear which brings us to 216,000 tons of materials invested for say two 500 megawatt nuclear reactors. To get 473 terawatt hours from wind, we have to invest 542 tons per megawatt hour. At 6,000 megawatts, that's 3,252,000 tons of materials. That's right, 15 times more for the same result, albeit with a great difference in reliability.